This paper is on trends in global inequality using a new integrated uh, data set. It's about global inequality. Global inequality is when we look at inequality among all citizens in the world. So like we treat the world as a unit, as a unit of analysis. And uh, we know something about the trends, mainly using the Gini index and it's mostly uh, focuses on household service. Uh, there is different contributions, especially since the 2000s. For example, Anna and Segal, Bourguignon and Morrison, later Bourguignon, Lackner and Milanovic, the World Bank, uh, and then later also Milanovic. And basically, in this literature, you identify that there was an increasing inequality, at some moment, there is a period in which the evidence is mixed in the 80s and 90s, depending on the period you consider the study, you can find different results. And then there is an agreement of, on a decline in inequality. Uh, some papers have looked at some sensitivity analysis, looking, for example, at different uh, measures of inequality with different emphasis on different parts of the distribution, for example, Lackner and Milanovic and Bourguignon. Uh, a more innovative approach was to look at, to put the emphasis on the top of the distribution, looking at the evolution of the income share of top incomes, and also using uh, uh, different types of data, in using basically survey data and introducing corrections based on either national accounts or using some statistical approaches. We have some uh, people looking at the impact on, of correcting for the top incomes on the level and trends on inequality, uh, and also this approach by the World uh, in, uh, Income Distribution held at the World Inequality Lab in Paris, where they produce a new whole set of more complex data combining different sources. And of course, this affects uh, the trends and, uh, and the levels, especially in some cases, the trends, as we will see later. No? And there is also a literature, or, uh, a small piece of literature looking at absolute inequality instead of relative inequality that is the most dominant approach and com uh, basically uh, identifying that inequality was increasing if you ab uh, adopt this approach like Ravalion or Nino, Sarasu and, and others. So in this case the main contribution of this paper is to use a new integrated standardized data set that you probably already know, the WID, that uh, we uh, hold that uh, you know wider. To, uh, this, uh, this data set includes uh, percentile information at the percentile level since 1950 for each country, uh, and then it's aggregated at the global to construct global inequality. Uh, it's based on household surveys, so there is no correction in this case for top incomes. I, I, even I will show you for robust analysis some of these corrections. Uh, it's based on the World Income Inequality Database that is there since 2000. And the idea is to provide a broad overview of trends in global inequality, uh, more detailed and systematic than most of the literature that I mentioned before, and a comprehensive analysis looking at overall inequality and inequality between and within countries and uh, with different approaches. So uh, the data is, try is I'm at being consistent, uh, increasing the Cover, time coverage and geographical coverage and trying to make it, the data uh, consistent uh, across countries and over time. We work with the entire distribution uh, and the, this gives us the possibility of looking at the sensitivity to different inequality approaches. We will look at uh, absolute and relative or where, whether you put more emphasis at the bottom, middle or top of the distribution. As I mentioned, not, no correction at this moment for top incas, but they will intro, do some exercise with some corrections to see the impact of that. And, and also it's innovative in this paper that we quantify the contribution of each country to total inequality and to the changes over time to identify the main drivers uh, in a more precise way. So about the data, this is uh, the, everything started with Daining and Squire in 1996. So the WIT is, uh, gave continuation to this compilation of information of inequality. It has been used by some of the literature already uh, in different formats, and is basically fed with information from the main income 
uh, income distribution providers like Pofcalnet or now the platform on inequality and poverty uh, at the World Bank, Luxembourg Income Study, Eurostat, Set Lucky Clark, and many, many, many others, including uh, research studies. So we have information for uh, basically all countries and some other territory, special territories with information with the Gini and the shares for this at the side, quintile or bottom and top five five percent, a mean, median, and uh, more recently we added also other inequality indices like the entropy family, Atkinson, Palma, etc. And has very uh, rich, rich information. But in general, it's a, it's a complex database because it has information, multiple options for one each country and year. So we made a selection of these best the best country series for each country, giving priority to those that are more internationally comparable and um, estimated for each country uh, and year the percentile distribution from aggregated data using the Shorrocks and one algorithm that is quite known in, in this literature. Uh, then um, we integrated these different series for countries and standardized them to make them comparable over time and across time. I'm not going into the details, but basically it's taking a, uh, advantage of the information, the overlapping of different um, series in one country or doing some regression analysis, uh, studying the relationship, for example, the main issue here is to, uh, that for some countries you have inf information on income, for others you have information on consumption and how to translate that into the same uh, measure that is per capita measure of welfare, that is per capita income. And then we study the empirical relationship between the distribution of income and consumption in those countries where you have both and then you extend that to uh, uh, other countries. So we end up with a, pa a balanced panel of uh, countries uh, uh, from 1950 uh, to 2020 uh, and that is uh, uh, aimed at being each year uh, updated with new information. Uh, for the income, of the average per capita income in each country, we use GDP at this stage in uh, PPPs. Uh, this GDP information comes mainly from the World Development Bank, uh, uh, World Development Indicator since 1990, and we reconstruct the historical series uh, backwards or for countries not included in WDI with the Madison project or even with the Pen uh, uh, World Tables. Uh, I will also show and I can advance that this is a very relevant element that changing the source can affect the inequality trend in specific periods. And I, I'm, it's not included in the database, but in this study, I'm including also some projections for 2021 uh, to 2027. Uh, projections on the evolution of GDP using IMF uh, database. Then, of course, when you build a global distribution, you need to make a lot of imputations or interpolations between survey years, because if the country doesn't have a, a survey each year or extrapolation before the earliest survey or after the last survey, and with a few imputations for countries with basically no information at all, and uh, you end up with a wall or regional percentile distribution and estimate several, just to give an idea of the quality of this exercise. Uh, of course, if you look at the, uh, after 20, uh, the 2000, we have information for uh, in, within a window of plus, minus plus five years for basically almost 100 of the population, especially after 2000. Uh, the, this drop here is because in, we don't have information for India more recently, even that probably is going to be available soon. And uh, of course, the more you go backwards, the lower the quality because we rely on um, the surveys that are farther away than five uh, years. No? But, uh, but even in the worst scenario, 1950, we have information for half uh, of the world uh, with the survey. Uh, falling between my, uh, plus uh, minus five years. No? But of course, the quality is better after 2000, obviously. Uh, the data is open access. It's a transparent. You can have information on all technical nodes, uh, uh, all the necessary elements, including the data code, to reproduce all the, uh, the process that we did. Okay, let's go. So what can we say with this data about the trend in inequality? First, uh, I look at what is known as absolute inequality. So it's not the dominant view on inequality, but in terms of the academic research, but some people claim that 
many people think in terms of global of absolute inequality when they think about inequality. Technically, this means imposing the translation invariance uh, uh, principle. Basically, the idea is that if there is growth, you need that every person receives the same amount of dollars for inequality to be constant. So it's quite demanding. No? Uh, so if you increase in the same proportion, but not the same amount, then inequality increases. No? And the same applies for uh, reduction. So it's really quite demanding. And what we see is in terms of, uh, you can see here the change over time between B the big periods, 50 and 80, 18 to uh, in, uh, 2000 and 2000 and 2020. And you can see here the, that in every period, basically, the richer you are, so the higher the percentile, the larger is the increase in income. So basically, the story about absolute inequality is very short. It's inequality increase all the time uh, because you can see that uh, for example, for this period, 80 to 2020, is what Martin Ravallion called the serpent graph. No? But the serpent changes the shape, but still always uh, like a pro-rich uh, growth in terms of absolute amounts. No? And if you translate this into measures, here you have the Gini index, you can see exactly that. Inequality, global inequality increase all the time, except in specific periods of recessions, but uh, uh, because during the recessions, Global in, uh, absolute, the absolute approach basically says that the, if the recession affects uh, proportionally every income, inequality declines. So it's a bit weird to apply this criteria when you have uh, 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 recessions. No? So basically, increasing inequality both between countries and within countries, and of course overall. In fact, there is Lorentz dominance. If, for people familiar with the Lorentz uh, criterion, which means that any index that is Lorentz consistent would tell you the same story. No. Uh, as you can see here. So for more details about this analysis by countries, we have another uh, um, paper in which we quantify that also for most countries in the world, this is true, inequality increased. No? And uh, this is consistent with other uh, papers like uh, Nino Zarazua or uh, Rupen Tarp, uh, Anand and Segal, or my own com computations using data from the World Inequality Lab, that you get basically the same story for the, speci the periods in which they apply. Okay, let's go for the richer story, that is when you look at in relative inequality, then it's when you have uh, a more nuanced uh, story. So this applies the, the scale invariance principle, saying that what keeps inequality constant is when everybody sees their income increased by the same proportion. Not the same amount in dollars, but the same percentage. So if the percentage is higher for the richer people, inequality increases. If the percentage tends to be higher for poor people, inequality tends to decline. In this case, these are the growth incidence curves. And here you see how the, the growth pattern worked during these um, sub-periods. In particular, for example, in 1980, 2000, you have this peculiar uh, shape that is what uh, Ranko Milanovic uh, called the elephant uh, graph, no? Yeah. And this was the elephant I found that matches this graph <laughs> <laughs> perfectly. <laughs> and and uh, you can see after 2000, the elephant, the trunk of the elephant is going down, and the first video was completely uh, different. No? Okay, trans how this translates into in terms of the evolution of trends in in, in the income share held by different population groups. You can see there was a large increase, even that the scale doesn't allow to see how, in, because it's worth, it was more than double with this data, uh, the increase in the bottom 40% after the 2000, but still it's a very small amount, uh, con considering that we have 40% of the population is receiving like 6% of the total income. So it's a, uh, the inequalities are still huge, but there was an improvement, especially after the 2000. You can see, at the same time, the top income 10% was relatively stable until there was a large increase uh, around uh, the period in which the Eastern Europe uh, uh, communist regimes collapsed. And also there were some large increases in the, top, in the concentration of top income in countries like the US, etc. There was a huge increase, but since also around 2000, it was declining, even that this is uh, decelerating and getting softer. So also for the middle 50%, so this period between 80s and 90s is when you see that the top increased 
while the middle decrease and the bottom increase. So there is, if you look at the bottom 40%, you will say probably that inequality declined. If you look at the top 10%, you will say that inequality increased. No? That is where the sensitivity to part of the distribution is more relevant. No? However, after the 2000s, there is more agreement because even if you look at here, unless I will say, uh, with, um, with, as I showed you, you look at the very, very top, uh, in general inequality also declined. And the Palma index is just the ratio between top 10% and bottom 40% and it has been declining uh, steadily since the end of the 70s and but all, all also st uh, uh, starting to be more stable sorry more yeah uh, with uh, decelerating at the decelerating rate here you can see also with uh, since 90 since 2020 this had including the projections the imf projections for the gdp and assuming constant inequality within countries uh, to just see what could we can expect in the years to come and how somehow the uh, even that we have an increase during the uh, of um, or a higher concentration at the top and lower the bottom during the uh, the pandemic the process seems to be uh, resumed after that uh, this is just what i mentioned before when you look at the very very top of the income distribution i don't i'm not doing this with my data because it's not um, designed to have a, an accurate estimate for these very precise uh, estimates, but it's when you find a different trend, no? like uh, an increasing inequality or uh, at the very uh, best uh, some stability. In terms of inequality measures that put more emphasis on different parts of the distribution, you can see the Gini index started to decline basically since uh, uh, since the, the 90s and, and, and mainly during the 2000s, but you find something similar with the mean log deviation that puts more emphasis at the bottom of the distribution. So the, and started the, 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 the fall of inequality started earlier. Oh, sorry, but if you look at the an index like uh, the uh, general entropy index that is related with the coefficient of variation, uh, then the declining inequality started later because it's uh, it reflects this increasing inequality when the top 10% was uh, going up. Uh, the main difference here, in my view, is when you put more emphasis at the bottom of the distribution at, uh, and you use an index like the general entropy measure for the parameter minus one, because then the story is totally different. You find a declining inequality in the initial years, some stability, and then was followed by an increasing inequality, indicating that when if you care much a lot, uh, about the poorest people in the world, then the story that inequality is declining is not true. The quality is increasing. Mm -hmm. uh, how this match the system literature? Well, you have here that it matches quite well estimates from other uh, uh, papers based on similar survey data, like Lackner and Milanovic, or Milanovic, or Nino Zarazu and others. Also, Davids and Shoros, that here the difference in levels is because this is a, a study on income and wealth, and then they don't use PPPs, so they use exchange rates to convert uh, incomes into dollars, uh, and then, of course, the in level of inequalities are higher. No? But the trend, as you see, is the same. Here, the main difference is with the information from the world income distribution, not the world inequality lab. Uh, but you can see also that the trend after 2000 is similar. Maybe the decline is uh, smaller. Uh, and may, the main di divergence comes from between mid-90s and 2005, but this is not due to the correction of top incomes, as, as I will show, but how we measure average income uh, by country. Uh, so to see this, for example, here you have in solid black, you have the, uh, our estimates with the width, two eyes is uh, you know wider, and with only one eye is the World Income Inequality Lab, so do you have this discontinuous uh, line that is the, the uh, top 10 percent with their estimates that are higher, especially after the 90s? Mm -hmm. But you can see in general that the trend is quite similar. And here, this, uh, this other curve in red uh, uh, discontinued is what I call the hybrid distribution. That is the width where I correct the top 1 percent, uh, getting in the information from uh, the World Inequality Lab to see the impact of only changing the top 1% and nothing else. No? Uh, and then you can see that the trend is quite parallel, even that the gap increases at the end, meaning that inequality, the following inequality is smaller if you make these corrections for the top uh, 1%. Uh, okay, and this impact that I estimate of correcting for the top 1% is in line with 
previous literature, Anand and Segal, they also used something sim a similar approach with the, an earlier version of the Topinka uh, database. So very similar, about two Gini uh, points uh, uh, initially that this increases uh, during the early 2000s and then it's like four uh, Gini points. No? Uh, this is between some estimates with, uh, that Milanovic and Lackner made initially or Milanovic later. Uh, they basically impute the top, uh, so the, the, ex, the part of the national income uh, that is not reflected in household service to the top 10% uh, of the population and they get these uh, higher estimates. Or this is uh, uh, Jorda and Nino Zarazua that they may follow a completely statistical approach so they don't use any uh, national accounts or tax uh, data to make the correction and they find like a bigger uh, impact. Okay, then this, uh, 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 this reduction in inequality, you can see in general that the trend in overall inequality is driven by the trend in between country inequality first increasing and then declining, while the trend in within country inequality is the opposite. It first declined and then increased, especially during the uh, 90s, and then uh, but keeps increasing or being uh, more stagnant. Uh, so we can say that overall inequality declined after 2000, for example, because inequality between countries declined, even that inequality within countries increased. This reflects also previous literature, for example, Bourguignon, for the period that we saw overlap. If we do, uh, we estimate using the Shapley decomposition, I'm not going into details now, uh, and see the relevance of the between country inequality to explain overall inequality, you can see that with any index, you find a similar uh, curve in the sense that inequalities between countries became more important until mid 80s, for example, uh, and then apart, uh, starting at that level all decline in many indices or with different sensitivities to the income distribution at different parts. Uh, you can say now that inequality within, quant within countries is more important than inequality w uh, between countries. Some robustness analysis, as I mentioned, so the story after 2000 is if I use different measures for the average income uh, uh, in each country, so the one I use in the WIT basically on WDI, complemented with the other sources, and I use the alternative, the GNI instead of GDP, or I use the Penn World Tables or the Madison Project. Basically, it's the same story, uh, except the period uh, between mid-90s and early 2000s, in which there is a large discrepancy between using WDI or Penn World Tables estimates. And why is that? Okay, China, no? <laughs> Not a surprise. Because the, how they perceive the, the Chinese miracle during this period is different. So in the Penn World Tables, China starts with a relative income compared to the average in the world at a higher level, and then the growth afterwards uh, is smaller than if you use uh, the WDI. Uh, no? So depending on the source, basically uh, this uh, impressive growth in China that is behind the declining inequality between countries started later. Mm -hmm. uh, something for, for India, but in the case of India, it's not that relevant because the trend in that period, in the period that there are discrepancies, is not that important. Mm -hmm. Okay, then I use a, an approach that I'm not going into details with, I estimate for each country or region the contribution of that uh, aggregate of, uh, yeah, of that country, aggregation of countries to overall inequality to identify and quantify. Of course, we already know that the decline in inequality between countries was due to China, but I want to quantify that in a more precise way, in consistent and, uh, and looking at the contribution to each component and we can see here that the contribution to inequality of East Asia and Pacific is, shows this large decline that driven mainly by China and that is responsible for the decline in inequality between countries uh, that we observed before. There are contributions from other regions like Europe but much smaller and, and basically was due more because Europe is less less important in terms of population. Uh, the opposite to Sub-Saharan Africa. No? You can see Sub-Saharan Africa is increasingly contributing to inequality, but it's mostly due to a composition effect, a, pop a higher level of population living in, proportion of population of the world living in Sub-Saharan Africa. And the other areas, yeah, they are important, but 
much less. This is just the case of China, where you can see the contribution of China to the between country inequality and to the within country inequality, and how it contributed to more uh, inequality between countries until the structural reforms, and then China started growing very fast, and then this huge contribution to the decline in inequality. But the opposite happens with the contribution to within country inequalities. So in the period in which China declined inequality, it has a large contribution to that, but then the contribution goes in the opposite direction, but this contribution is smaller than the other one, and then the net effect is uh, contributing to reduce inequality. This is something similar to India. It's a same, similar story, but uh, um, very different levels, and yes, for the US or for other countries. And just so to finalize, for example, to, as a way to quantify uh, this contribution, for example, you can see that for the period 2020-20, there is a fall in uh, Gini in 8.2 points, and you can see this is the composition in inequality between countries in the world and inequality within countries, and this is like a composition for due to changes in population. And of course, here you can see that out of 11 points of the decline in inequality between countries in the world, 6.5 are explained by China, 1.9 are explained by India. So basically, these two countries account for almost the whole effect. And the, and the same happens with increasing inequality within countries. 1.8 points the, uh, of the overall for the, the, the world. 1.7 came from China, 0 0.5 from India. So India and China could also explain basically that increase. It doesn't mean that in other countries didn't increase inequality, but the net effect cancels out. So some, there were some increases and declines. Okay, then that's it. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs>